Hello everybody, I hope you're all having a great day today. Today, I just want to get right into the point with some recommendations and known requirements to have a set of Corsa run well for you, or at least run decent. The issue is, if you have a budget build, something like a 1050 or a 1650, 1070 Ti, anything like that, combined with 16 gigs of RAM and a processor like a Ryzen 5 3600. You know, a, a decent budget entry-level build that's fairly cheap. If you have something like that, you can run this game at 100 FPS, no problem. The only issue is you need to understand as soon as you start to enter bigger servers, that PC is going to start lagging. Even if you have something like a 3060, a 4070, you can have everything like that in the world you want. If you don't have enough RAM and CPU power and motherboard and data transfer speed to transfer everything and read and write as fast as possible, every PC has a cap in these servers. That's the biggest issue with Assetto Corsa. People go, oh, I can't play Assetto Corsa, I'm trying to join Nohezi with 16 gigs of RAM in the heavy traffic. That might not work for you, but I'll give you your best chance today to make this work for you. So the first thing that's important is that you install Assetto Corsa, run the game first on Steam, and then you get Content Manager. If you haven't run the game in Steam, at all ever, run the game in Steam, it will install some runtime scripts, and then go play in Content Manager. A lot of people that can't join or have a big problem right off of the bat never launch the game in Steam, and the runtime plugins never installed correctly. This isn't mandatory. Some people this doesn't happen to, but for some people, it's not going to hurt to run the game in Steam just to make sure all the runtime things installed properly. The next thing that we want to make sure is that if we open to where our Steam folder is, for me it's Programs86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and Assetto Corsa. This is the only folder that you want to install your content into. You want to make sure all of your Assetto Corsa content is all on the same drive unless you don't plan to be using it. What I mean by that is if you have an SSD and a hard drive, you should have the game on the SSD and everything on the game running on the SSD. And if you want to save some tracks or cars, you can take those folders and put those folders on another drive only to bring them back over to your main Assetto Corsa folder once you're ready to use that content. Everything that you play with Assetto Corsa should be on the same drive in the same folders as all of your other Assetto Corsa content. Another important thing is that on your storage drive you have at least a solid state drive, a normal SSD. It doesn't matter if it's a 250 gig SSD and you buy one really cheap, even used, just to play Assetto on. You just put Assetto Corsa <clears throat> on that drive. Everything for Assetto Corsa is on your SSD. And that's how you're going to get even better performance. The bigger the server, the more things going on, the more you need an SSD. A hard drive has a physical, mechanical arm that reads and writes data to your system at a speed unknown to humans. We cannot write or read that fast, it's impossible. However, because it's a physical mechanical arm and an SSD is electronically transferred through data cables, they can literally be up to a hundred times faster. And then you can get into the M.2s which screw right into your motherboard connection which provides the best data transfer rates. Basically what I'm saying is if you have a hard drive, you are going to more likely have problems with the game running good. Another huge thing is the amount of storage that you have left on your storage drive. 
if you are running Windows on your storage drive, I only have one drive here because I have a 2 terabyte M.2. If I run this so low on space that this bar goes red, my PC is going to slow down significantly. This is something that Windows does. This is something that happens to everybody. It's not a me thing. It's not a you thing. It is an everybody together that has ever owned a PC and runs Windows thing. If you have your storage too low, your PC is going to slow itself down, and you'll even get a pop-up message on your PC if you have notifications active that will tell you your PC is being slowed down due to the lack of storage. Always make sure that you have at least 10% free. That's my number. So if I have a 2 terabyte hard drive, I'm not going to let this space get less than 200 gigs. That's 10%. If I have 1 gig, I don't want to go over 100. If I have... Anyway, you get, you get the point. If I have 50... I don't want to be under 10%, so I don't want to be under 5 It's going to slow everything down. Just run with 10%, and everything will be all good. My math was not mathing there, but you guys get it. So now that we've addressed that, a settle being in the same place, running it in Steam, the different types of storage devices, the different types of speeds that you'll get from them, Another thing we need to talk about before we go into any graphical stuff or anything on your PC for deleting anything is we know about the storage devices. Now we need to talk about RAM for two seconds. If you have 8 gigs of RAM, you're a single player, a seto player, or a really low end server player. If you have 16 gigs of RAM, you can play medium spec servers. If you have 32, you won't have any problems with no hezi and push and pee. That's just how it is. For 16 gig no hezi players, you got to have decent 16 gigs and your PC has to be running properly. For 32 gigs, you're pretty much fine to do whatever. And now the next thing that we'll talk about here is your task manager. <clears throat> so as you can see, just based off of my screen here, I have a whole bunch of things open that don't need to be open. I'm using 6% memory, 5 to 8% CPU, and I don't want any of this stuff on while I play the game. I want my game to be running my game and not much other stuff. So one important thing is if you click on the Users tab in your Task Manager, you can see how many things you are running. Beside your name, there is a number. We're going to click the arrow. And what we see here is a lot of Microsoft Edge, we see some Discord stuff, some host stuff, all sorts of different things. We see IV Cam open there, which I'm not using right now. So these are things that we need to address after. Another thing that we're going to go be do before we come back to that is click on our services. And if we make the service window bigger and we click on the running tab, everything that's running will be at the top. This is something that I do every single time I go to play a Seto. I come through here and I quickly disable the services that I know that I don't need. So I go and stop gaming services. I go down a little further and we'll start to see some other things that I take off here. Keep going down a bit. One sync, that comes off. Keep going down a little bit more. Oh, I think actually, uh, I think I actually already went and did this, and that's why I'm not seeing all the things that I have disabled. But basically, what I did was I came into here, and I disabled anything that said gaming services, Xbox Live, iRacing. Um, themes, uh, system main, one sync, there's a whole bunch of things in here, OVR service for Oculus, but I'm not using it, um, all my Razer software services, I'm not using those while I play, none of that stuff, so I came in here, and you can see that I have a lot of things that are not running, there's one sync, there's system main, you come in here, and you just pretty much disable all of that stuff, and then you can come into your task manager and safely get rid of everything here 
end all these tasks, end everything that you're not using, just keep on ending everything, eventually everything that you're not using will go away. I'm going to end all the runtime brokers. Keep ending these Microsoft Edges until they're gone. Come into your Processes tab. Hit CPU so everything is at the top that's using your system. And we can see that all of this stuff is basically stuff that I'm using. I can scroll down all the way just to make sure that it's all services and nothing else is happening with any programs that I have. So now I've gone from 60 things running down to a simple 42 things running. It's a big difference. My system's sitting a lot better and we're all happy and good to go there. Another thing you want to do in here is disable things that you don't need that you have installed that are launching on startup just like that so now after you've done this you're on the right path so now we've gone through some of the windows services programs you can end we know about the storages we know about the difference in the ram so everything here now is starting to come together and another thing I want to show you guys real quick that's actually really important is if you go to your search bar and you type in for example notifications right we get notifications and action settings we're going to click on that and it just came up on my other monitor so let me just bring it over here and here's what I do I come in here and I turn off everything for notifications I don't want any notifications while I'm playing any games. I don't need anything to come up. So I'm just going to go ahead and take off notifications. There's also another thing on your taskbar. If you click on your taskbar, you will find a thing here called news and interests. The only thing is I think it's actually going to be over here but it's going to be over here on your main window. I actually don't have that right here, but what you will see is a thing called news and interests. And you're going to turn that off because every once in a while that pops up and you get a whole bunch of CPU usage for no reason, just because you hit the, the news and interests on it just comes default on on Windows, you want to turn that off. The other thing that we can do before we play a setto is I like to turn off my real-time live antivirus scanning that comes with Windows. I'm online in a server, I'm trying to enjoy my server that I'm playing in with all of my friends. I really don't want a virus scan to happen in live time while I'm playing the game. There's no reason for that to happen. I'm just playing a set with my friends. So let's go ahead and turn that off. It's going to give you a security warning. You click yes. It's going to say your device is vulnerable, but if you've read the hacking tip section of the Discord, you'll know that this is totally fine because you know how to protect yourself. So last but not least here, we've gone over Windows stuff, we've gone over storage, we've gone over RAM, we've gone over things to remove, we've gone over services, all that stuff. Go ahead and restart your PC now. Now you should be in a good spot to go ahead and restart your PC and come back to the video and finish the rest, which all the rest of the video is, is I'm just going to say thanks for watching. Check out the Discord so you can get yourself presets and you don't have to do too much work to get presets. But for the base knowledge of the game and the very basic things you should do to give yourself the best chance of running this game with high FPS is optimize your PC. Go buy that extra 8 gigs of RAM if you can. Delete a couple games that you don't play. Free up that storage. Get an SSD. You know, start making the, the changes in Windows, start making the changes in your task manager, start looking at your task manager to see what's running. You really gotta sit there 
and make sure that while you're playing you're not using 40% CPU in other things that aren't related to the game. Got to make sure you don't have a bunch of Discord and Steam and internet tabs open that are playing videos and stuff. You don't need to do that while you're playing the game. You just got to play the game and try and make it so your PC is running just the game and you're focused on the game and everything is running the best that it can be to play this game. It's an old game, it will work, you can play it, but it will have problems online if you don't have the hardware or if you don't do anything to try to optimize your system. Have a great day everybody, take care, hope you enjoyed today's video.